When the Griffins take on the Spartans, it can be hit or myth. Next on Quiz Kids. It's the Bay Area Quiz Kids. Brought to you by the San Mateo Credit Union. And now, the best host on the West Coast, Brad Friedman. Thank you so much. Welcome to Quiz Kids. We tried that pun earlier and the audience left. So um, they're back and we tried it again. And I'm here with two incredible teams that we saw last week. They both won their matches. They're going to face each other. First over here, we have the Crystal Springs Upland Griffins. <laughs> And they're taking on the Mountain View Spartans. <laughs> Ella, gentlemen, welcome. Good luck to you. Here's your first toss-up question. Finney lives by the rule, you always win at sports, in this novel set at the Devon School. What is this novel narrated by Gene Forrester called? Kevin. A separate piece. That is right. For 25 points, which author of a separate piece also set the novel Peace Breaks Out at Devon? George. John Knowles. Next toss-up. She received her first newspaper job after writing a letter to the editor rebutting an article titled, What Girls Are Good For? Which female journalist who chronicled a trip inspired by Phileas Fogg in her book, Around the World in 72 Days? It was Nellie Bly. Next toss-up. This musician led a namesake quartet that included Paul Desmond on saxophone, whose 1959 album Time Out included tracks in unusual time signatures such as Blue Rondo a la Turk and Take Five. Henry. Buddy Holly. No. You can steal. Kevin. The Four Seasons. You need to bone up on your jazz, Dave Brubeck. OK, well, we have a slow start, so let's slow down and talk to our teams. From Crystal Springs up, and we have Jake. Jake, uh, the uh, Hillsdale team has these gorgeous blue t-shirts they're wearing. Menlo has these brilliant blue uh, matching shirts. And it looks like you guys were going for the idea, but something went wrong on the way. Yeah, we got close. You, you see, Brad, we wanted to look good for you, so we wanted to wear the button-downs. So we all decided we're going to wear an Oxford blue button-down. I'm but impressed. But we, uh, we showed up in the elevator, and much to our horror, blue means a very different thing to each and every one of us. So and it still kind of works. And if we had an extra half hour, I'd like to know what each blue shade means to you, but we know that yeah. blue <laughs> covers a wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the effort, Jake. Henry, you are yes. presently learning Russian. I am, and I certainly can tell you what each blue shade means in Russian. Yes, please Maybe do. Maybe not to us, but in Russian. Uh, this is dark blue, which is scenery. This is light blue, which is golubuya. And this is in between sort of blue, which is known as in betweenly, which is. <laughs> I'm so impressed with the fluency with which you've picked up this, this language. It's tough. Good for you, Henry. Patrick Smith. Patrick, you are a golfer. You I play am. on Menlo's team? Pardon? You play on Menlo's team? I, I do not you play do on not? You just play for fun? What are you, what are you 50, 65 years old? How old are you? <laughs> no, I, don't, I play on Crystal Springs team. I don't oh, you play on Crystal Springs team. Yeah. That's what it is. They're, they're our rivals. You play on Crystal you Springs team. Me, Brad. I got to get the right school going. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was looking. That was a big mistake, Brad. <laughs> I was looking up. There's a Menlo player. We were going to do this big thing, but you won and they lost. And so here we go. It means nothing anymore. Forget I even mentioned golf. Goodbye, Patrick. <laughs> Mountain View, we're moving on. For Ella. Ella, you are um, into theater. Yeah. Especially Shakespeare. Yeah. Which is unusual for a young actor. I can't sing. You can't sing. So can't you're going sing. for the classics, okay? Yes. If you could pick any classic Shakespeare female role to play right now, what would it be? Who says it has to be female roles? You're absolutely uh -huh. right. You're not allowed to play at all according to William Shakespeare. <laughs> so this conversation is moot. Too late. <laughs> Kevin Chan. Kevin, yes. uh, you're part of the Mock Trial team. Yes, I am. And Mock Trial has a kind of an odd case this year of revolving in art theft. What role do you play in this year's Mock Trial? So I am a prosecutor. Um, I actually do the pretrial stuff. Mm -hmm. So we look at the Fourth Amendment, consent issues. Has it kind of made you decide you do want to be a lawyer? I don't know yet. I don't know what to major in. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good luck. I guess you don't have to decide right here at Quiz Kids, but yeah. soon. 
Deo, you're part of the, uh, the Environmental Club. You just joined that club. What does the Environmental Club do at Mountain View? It helps with recycling, like plastic water bottles and other stuff. Uh huh. And we have pla like water bottle refill stations all around the school, so that you. Oh, know. that's the new thing. Yeah, we found those at our school too. That's really cool. Well, good for you for all the fine work you're doing. Here's your next toss-up. The Vicuna lives in these mountains. Henry. The Andes. Right, you score 10 points. Good, something. All right, for 25 points at over 22,800 feet above sea level, which Argentine peak is the highest in the Americas? Aconcagua. Aconcagua. You got it. And for 50 points, the Earth's rotation causes a slight bulge along the equator, meaning that which, which Ecuadorian volcano is farther from the center of the Earth than any other point on the surface? Henry. Vesuvius. Chimborazo. According to legend, Henry IV said, Paris is well worth a mass. <laughs> this statement expressed Henry's willingness to convert to what faith so as to be accepted as king of France? Patrick. Catholicism. That is right. For 25 points, Henry IV became the first French king of which dynasty that ruled France until 1792? The Bourbons. Right. And for 50 points, despite his conversion to Catholicism, in 1598, Henry IV issued what proclamation to guarantee religious freedom to French Protestants? The Edict of Nantes. And that is a 50-point earn. Congratulations. <laughs> Next toss-up. This man was sentenced to prison on Robben Island after the Rivonia trial. Yes, Jake? Nelson Mandela. That is right. For 25 points, Mandela shared the 1993 Nobel Prize with which other South African president who helped end the system of apartheid? De Klerk. That is correct. And for 50 points, Mandela's successor as president was which man who resigned in 2008 after his deputy, Jacob Zuma, was charged with corruption? Mbeki. You got 50 points. <laughs> Next toss-up. Conrad Lorenz studied this behavior in ducklings. What do psychologists call a process... Yes, uh, Ella. Nazism or imprintation? That is right. For 25 points, birds plucking ticks off rhinoceroses and clownfish living in anemones are examples of which type of symbiotic relationship in which both partners benefit? Um, Kevin? Um, mutual symbiosis? I, I will accept that. Mutualism, yes. For 50 points, in kin selection, Organisms optimize an inclusive form of which characteristic by ensuring that the genes of their close relatives are passed on? Altruism. Kevin? Altruism. Reproductive fitness. Next toss-up. His only opera was called Fidelio. Who was this German composer of nine symphonies and the emperor can... Yes, Henry. Beethoven. Yeah, the fiddlers should know this, right? <laughs> For 25 points, Beethoven is one of classical music's three Bs. Name the other B who created some of the most well-known works of the Baroque period. Bach. Bach. And for 50 points, the third B has changed over time. Most people think Brahms, but it was originally held by which French Romantic composer? Berlioz. Berlioz. That is correct for 50 points. And that is the end of the round. 35 for Mountain View. Crystal Springs in 175. Can Mountain View catch up? Don't go away, we'll find out. <laughs> Let's say hello to the coaches. First, Patrick from Crystal Springs. His coach, his name is Dr. Keith Carricker. <laughs> and the Mountain View team's coaches are Sarah McWay and Chris Chang. Thank you, coaches. All right. Well, there's quite a difference, but you know what? Mountain View, you can catch up. You can even win this game. All you got to do is answer five correct quest questions correctly, and you will be in the lead. Answer all seven, and you're going to make Crystal Springs work to win this game. There are three categories, each with seven questions. Here they are. Be Diplomatic, Organ Recital, and Spice Rack. Which category would you like? Organ Recital. Organ Recital. Which is the principal organ involved in these conditions? We're talking body organs, okay? Hepatitis. Liver. 
Liver? That's right. Conjunctivitis. Wait, you say eyes. Eyes? That's right. Psoriasis. Yes, yeah, skin. That is correct. Pneumonia. Lungs. Right. Celiac disease, which is a sensitivity to gluten. Small intestine? That is correct. You have now taken the lead. Let's see how much further you can go. Endocarditis. Okay, heart. That is right. And finally, nephritis. Kidney. You got them all right. Congratulations. You are in the lead. And Crystal Springs needs to get three correct, and they will win the game. Which category do you want, gentlemen? Be diplomatic or spice rack? We'd like be diplomatic. Be diplomatic. I'll name a secretary of state. You tell me the president in whose cabinet he or she served. Thomas Jefferson. Washington. Washington. That's right. Madeline Albright. Clinton. Clinton. All you need is one more correct answer. You'll win the game. William Seward. Lincoln. That is right. You won the game. Crystal Springs, 265. Congratulations. Thank you both teams for playing. We'll see you in a few weeks, and we'll be right back with our second match. Don't go away. We are back, and this I don't think has ever happened to us in 16 years. This is so exciting. We're going to have the joust to end all jousts. We're going to have a true Game of Thrones here. In fact, one of our contestants looks a little like the late King Jeffrey. So let's introduce the Hillsdale Knights. <laughs> Mounting their light blue steeds and taking on the Menlo School Knights. Slipping on their dark blue visors. And here we go, you guys. First toss up. Which Greek thinker from Alea is known for his paradoxes, including one about a race between Achilles and a Yes, Grace. Zeno? That is right. For 25 points, which cynic who stressed self-sufficiency wandered the streets of Athens in daylight with a lantern searching for an honest man? Can you say it? Diogenes? That is right. For 50 points, which philosopher a student of Leucippus proposed that all matter is made up of indivisible particles he termed atoms. I'm a Greek guy. <laughs> yes, it is a Greek Homer. guy. Homer. <laughs> it was Democritus. 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 Okay. Here's your next toss up. Electrons in atoms have four quantum numbers. Whose exclusion principle states that no two? Yes, Christopher. Pauli. That is right. For 25 points, the fourth quantum number signifies this quantity for which electrons can be either negative one half or positive one half. It can also be described as up or down. Spin. 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 Correct. And for 50 points, an electron with principal quantum number n equals 3 can have this many values for the third quantum number m sub l. Christopher. Uh, five. That is right, for 50 points. <laughs> Next toss-up. Because this dynasty lost control of northern China in 1127, it is commonly divided into Bay and Nan, or northern and southern periods. Which Chinese dynasty that ended in 1279 after a prolonged struggle against the Mongols? Yes, Benjamin. Ming? No. You can steal Menlo. Talk it over. Christopher? Han. Song. Song Dynasty. OK, let's take a moment up and talk to all the knights on their horses from Hillsdale. Michael Wu. Yes. Michael, um, you play, uh, you, well, here's the thing. You guys are in this different order than when we talk, so I'm going to make you start this. You right. are all divided into advisories, yes. right? And now advisories are doing something very academic. <laughs> they are engaging in vicious dodgeball games. Yeah. Yes, why? Um, I guess 
We had spent three, three weeks, or the, sure. the, the beginning of the semester, um, looking at colleges. Yeah. So advisory is useful. Okay, yeah. it is useful. Now that you've picked your colleges and are waiting to hear, you're going to hit each other with balls. Yes. Yeah, and it, it, you're, I guess I understand and that you are a losing dodgeball <laughs> advisory. Uh, hey, we, we were second, so it wasn't too bad. Okay, It was right. not a close second. Good. Grace, you were the winning. <laughs> be the rest of the people. Grace, you were the winning dodgeball advisory. Yes. That is fantastic. You have nothing more interesting to talk about in your high school experience than the fact that you threw a ball viciously at Michael and hit him, and you won. Yes. We're moving on. <laughs> ben, your, tutor your advisory chose not to engage in dodgeball. No, no, no. The pacifists. <laughs> but you are working on one X right now in yes. drama, not in advisory. Yes, based, uh, what the one acts are, with our advanced drama class, we do these five short plays called one acts, and the entire thing is entirely student run. Okay. All the acting is done by us, all the casting is done by us, all the sets and costumes are done by do us. Do you write the plays? We don't write them. Well, some of them are written by our students, not all of them are. Okay. Um, and you get to direct one. I am directing one of them, yes. Congratulations. Mine happens to be based off of Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, where I think they had a very violent form of dodgeball. In Much the, more violent form of dodgeball. I'm right, not sure exactly. they're using balls there. Good luck to you there. You're all vicious people. <laughs> Let's go to Menlo, where they're all very peace-loving. Rory, yes. you're on the newspaper. Yes. And what position do you have? So I am co-online editor and assistant opinions editor for the Coat of Arms. Ah. Yes. And uh, have there been any interesting opinions that have been shared by the newspaper? Um, I think uh, the most interesting one that we've had was um, why Manny Pacquiao should fight Floyd Mayweather. And so um, it, was, it had nothing to do with Menlo. It was just, you know, a good just, opinion. But it got mm -hmm. a lot of people stirred yeah. up. Wow. So. Okay. Um, so, Christopher, uh, when we uh, need a new computer, we often contact our favorite manufacturer and we ask them to send us a new computer. But you don't do it that way. You contacted your favorite manufacturer and asked them to send you the parts. Several different manufacturers. Several different, several different manufacturers, so yes. you could build your own computer. Yes. How'd that work out for you? Um, well, I have. Uh, it works, and Windows has been installed. Um, the any moving graphics are kind of slideshow-like, so my graphics card still needs some configuring. But I can get a display, and I can uh, I can run simple things on it now. So. And once you put it together, if you have a problem, do you have to call yourself at customer service? <laughs> um, I have. Exhausted my knowledge of computers, oh, well, so I have to call my friends. Call someone more. else. All right, your friend will help you. Um, David, you belong to a class that actually builds all kinds of interesting computer and technological devices. What did you just build? Yeah, so it's a class called Applied Science Research, uh -huh. and uh, actually Christopher's in it too. And I, uh, I built an LED cube, so it's a three by three by three. Okay. And he built his own computer for fun. You built a cube that just lights up. Right. <laughs> Fabulous, David. <laughs> Fabulous. Good luck to you with your future career. Let's continue with the game. David will need the money to win if he wins. Here's your next toss-up question. The symbol for this device is two separated parallel flat plates. Yes, Michael. Capacitor. That is right. For 25 points, the SI unit of capacitance is named after which English discoverer of electromagnetic induction? Someone say it. Farad. Say what? Farad? No. no. Faraday. 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 Oh. Michael Faraday. Next toss up. In AD 301, it became Asia's first officially Christian kingdom. Which modern day country has its capital at Yerevan? Michael. Armenia? Right. For 25 points, the Seljuk Turks founded the Sultanate of Rum and conquered Acre in 1291, completing the destruction of the Crusader kingdom named for which holy city? Grace. Grace. Mecca. Uh, it's a little town called Jerusalem. Next toss up. Its waste product is oxygen. What is this biological process, Benjamin? Photosynthesis. Right. For 25 points, what compound vital to photosynthesis gives leaves their green color? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Right. And for 50 points, what is the name given to plants whose green leaves annually change color and fall off? Um, this is no, this is just a tree, right? Grace. Uh, perennial? Yeah. Deciduous. Oh, that is the okay. end of the round. Whoa. 70 points for Hillsdale, 50 points for Menlo. Let's go to a break and we'll come back for the final round of this game. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's give a big hand to the coaches for all they do for their teams. First from Hillsdale, Mr. Ethan Stewart and Mr. Chris Stallings. 
And from Menlo School, Mr. Richard Steinberg. All right, you guys, 70 to 50. Menlo, you only need one correct answer to take the lead from Hillsdale, but you want to try and get all seven, I know, from one of the three categories we offer you today, and they are Fruit Stand, See the USA, and Be Afraid. See the USA. See the USA. Okay, I'm going to name a landmark, and you tell me which American city or town contains the landmark, okay? Where do you find the Liberty Bell? Philadelphia. Right. Where do you find the Space Needle? Seattle. Seattle. Correct. The National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Louisville. No, Cooperstown, New York. Cooperstown. The Grand Ole Opry House. New Orleans. Well, that's in Nashville, Tennessee. The uh, Fanwee Hall. Boston. That's right. The Shed Aquarium. Atlanta. No, I was just in this great town of Chicago. And finally, the Mark Twain Boyhood Home and Museum. Christopher? Detroit. No, it's Hannibal, Missouri. So I think you got three right, and that's 140 points. You have the lead. It looks like you need to get three and you will win the game. Will it be from Fruit Stand or Be Afraid? Be Afraid. Be Afraid. These are all a phobia. Oh. I will name the phobia, the, the actual name of it. You tell me what fear these people suffer from, OK? If they have arachnophobia, what are they afraid of? Spiders. Spiders. Right. What about acrophobia? Heights. That is right. Nice. Hemophobia. Blood. Blood. You win the game. <laughs> yes! Hillsdale wins. Thank you guys so much for playing. We'll see you all in a few weeks for another round, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.